Good evening, one and all, and welcome to episode 268 of Love at First Sent with me, Percy Lace, coming to you live from YouTube. Please do consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so, and do consider supporting my work on Coffee. You will find information about all of that in the video description below. A huge thank you to those of you watching live and who have stayed tuned in for all of the episodes so far. This is the fourth one I've been doing this evening. Uh, so fourth, fourth one I am doing this evening, and we're going to go for a fifth one as well. First comment for this one goes to Chippy, who says, I want to be the first to wish you a beautiful day. That's very, very sweet. Beautiful day to you as well. Angela says, hi there, everyone. Diana says, commenting for the algorithm. The algorithm thanks you. Um, Jeannie saying hello as well. And Rachel says, ooh, Rodrigo Flores Ruiz. Absolutely. Okay, so what have we got in store for this video? This one may be a tiny, tiny little bit longer than um, than the other ones. Uh, because th 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 there are more um, there are more perfumes to talk about. Not that we're going to be doing every single one. I would like to introduce to you a a, br a brand that I believe is new. It's certainly new to me, and it's called Will Germain, and I have it on good authority because I have it on the authority of the brand founder. That um, that is how we're meant to pronounce the name. It's it's a putting together of Williamsburg and Saint-Germain, because those are two places that are very important to the founder. The founder being a Spanish gentleman uh, from Barcelona called Francisco uh, Gratacos. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, if you if you Google the name of the brand, um, you, you will be able to find out um, a bit about him. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet him the other day together with Rodrigo Flores Rue. was the first time I'd seen Rodrigo in the flesh, as it were, for a long time. Uh, Rodrigo, uh, as many of you will be aware, of course, is a master uh, perfumer uh, who holds a very high position at uh, Givaudan. He has made all of the perfumes for um, Arquiste. Uh, sorry, nearly all. Some of them have been co-made with Jan Vanier. Um, he uh, has made a lot of perfumes for Tom Ford, not that anybody is officially allowed to confirm that, because you're not allowed to confirm that if you've made sense for Tom Ford. He is officially allowed to confirm that he made Clinique happy and loads and loads of other extremely successful scents. And so far, he is the sole perfumer for this particular brand. How did I try again? The sole perfumer for Will Germain. Now, I need to uh, confirm the particular exclusivity of this brand, because I know that they are exclusive to Harrods, or they will be imminently exclusive to Harrods, but I don't know whether that is a UK exclusivity or a worldwide exclusivity. I have a feeling it's the latter, but I may be mistaken. Uh, all of that you will be able to find out for yourselves very, very easily. Um, as I say, we're not going to be able to smell every single thing, because there are uh, six debut scents, um, this is what the bottle looks like, the packaging. Um, this is one called Unconfessa Un Unconfe uh, Inconfessible, Inconfessible, okay, which is a really, really great name. Um, quite a weighty feel to it, really, really weighty cap. Um, the, uh, the, the industrial looking elements of the cap have got a sort of significance to the story behind the brand as well. And I thought what was fascinating, now Rodrigo Flores Rue, as you will know from the interview that, that he kindly uh, did on this channel a little while ago, is supremely talented when it comes to talking about his work. You know, it's one thing being a good perfumer, it's one thing creating memorable scents, but it's quite another actually being able to explain your work and talk about what you do. And those two don't actually necessarily have to go together. You know, if I had to take my pick, I would rather a perfumer who is extremely inarticulate, you know, if, if, you, if you could only have the one, then obviously you would want to go for the perfumer who isn't particularly articulate and yet is able to produce beautiful work. Lucky us, Rodrigo Flores Rue is able to do both. And he, um, as Cynthia says, he is such a joy in his interviews. A absolutely. Um, and he and the brand founder, Francisco, explained the, the, the particular thinking behind the aesthetic for this brand and what they said was that at least at the moment at least in the early stages of the of the life of this brand they don't want scents that could be um uh that could be seen as being weird or out there or strange or avant-garde in any way what they do want is 
more classically minded perfumes, more classically inclined perfumes that have got an evolution, that have got top, top, middle and base development, that have got, you know, a strong sillage. And um, they actually cited, or, or certainly Francisco cited um, Frederick Mal as, uh, as a kind of model to follow, um, which I guess makes sense because uh, Frederick Mal. Uh, certainly in the early days, w wasn't doing anything that was considered to be, you know, particularly comme de garçon in its, in its weirdness or its strangeness, was revisiting classic forms and yet trying to do them in a really, really qualitative way, which also somehow came across as being um, modern and relevant. And certainly on the basis of my initial sniff of these works, I would say that they have succeeded. I haven't spent a huge amount of time with them yet. And as you would imagine, you know, when you've got six cents, there are going to be some that you you, you like more than others. But as, as a range, they came across as very, very coherent, very, very solid, really, really well done, really interesting. Um, and I would like to maybe smell a couple of them with you here and um, to, to, to bring them to your attention. I don't know. I don't know what the exclusivity is going to mean in terms of what the availability of discovery sets and things like that is going to be, but I'm sure all of that is, go is going to be made clear on the brand's website. So let's just give you a little bit of background. Will Germain is a luxury perfume house that was born with the aim of satisfying many different lifestyles from the most demanding fragrance aficionado to the individual buying a quality scent for the first time, as it offers a carefully edited collection of exceptional fragrances conceived to cover a broad range of fragrant themes. Deeply imbued with the tastes and character of both Paris and New York, the house, as well as each one of its scents, found their inspiration in these two cities, both the City of Lights and the Big Apple are the unquestionable muses of the brand. With an international scope and a will to become universal, each detail of Will Germain has been thoughtfully conceived and has been entirely produced in both Europe and the USA by traditional artisans, all of its components being environmentally friendly. I'm not going to read every single bit. Uh, the founder, Francisco Gratacos, I was going to say, I hope to be able to get him on this channel because he was fascinating to talk to as well. And he has got uh, several years of experience in the perfume industry. He worked a lot with and at Ramon Monegal. Um, so definitely lots and lots of stories that he could tell. Rodrigo Flores Rude needs absolutely no introduction to you. Um, the, the cap is interesting. Uh, you know, I was talking about its industrial elements. As this little booklet says, a refined metallic cap tops it all, as in the, the bottle, designed with a shape reminiscent of the bolts and screws that keep together both the Brooklyn Bridge and the Eiffel Tower. And I think you can kind of see that. Modernity, high design, abstraction, and historical references all encompassed in one mere design. Made of fine Zamac 5, our cap is entirely made in Europe by artisans, hand polished one by one and carefully plated in 24 karat gold. Oh, I didn't realize they're gold plated. Oh, gosh, what are these retail for then? Whoa. Okay. Um, the, the six cents, I'll throw out some names. Actually, let's see some comments here. Love Rodrigo Flores Rue says Claire Zimbalin. Uh, Chippy says, sounds great. There is way too much weirdness in fragrances nowadays. Um, weird stands out, says Eco Jock. Um, and Eco just says, Why wow, were they leveling up? I know. So I will share th the names with you. And then maybe if you like the sound of one in particular, that's the one that we can smell. Although I've kind of, I know which two I think would be interesting to smell with you. So there's one called Aqua Fortis. Then there's a Radianza or Radianza. Then we've got More is More. Then there's the Inconfessible one that you saw. Then we've got Passion Victim, and then one called Possession, which, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed um, that, that the name Possession hadn't been taken. I think, if you don't mind, if we start with Aqua Fortis, because uh, Rodrigo himself felt very, very strongly about this, perhaps if we interview Francisco or Rodrigo again, we could get them to explain why Aquafortis is particularly interesting. Uh, Givaudan have, it seems, been doing a lot of work into creating new types of citrus materials, uh, different different um, extraction techniques. <clears throat> and Rodrigo said that when he was making Aquafortis, 
what he really wanted was to try to chase the one of the holy grails in perfumery, which is to make a citrus that lasts a really, really long time. And I said that I find that concept interesting as well, because a lot of the time I'm not sure, I, I know that a lot of the time we would like the idea of a citrus that lasts forever, but I think if we were to actually be given one, we would find it really difficult to take because those really, really bracing, fresh, exuberant, zingy, zesty citrus notes, if you really can imagine them lasting for hours and hours and hours, I think after a while they would they would become really, really tiring and overbearing. So I suppose the the the, the trick would be to create something that somehow still manages to retain the the essence of the energy of citrus notes and yet also knows when to tone things down and 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 when to give you just 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 space to breathe and room to breathe um aquafortis i haven't yet tried on skin i've only smelt it on a blotter um but but it's certainly a very 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 commendable attempt i would say at achieving this particular um perfumery feat um yeah it i mean it's opening its opening is just so gloriously citrusy. You're immediately taken into the realms of Tom Ford Neroli Portofino, which is a scent that Rodrigo Flores Rue may or may not have something to do with. Um, but you can also straight away tell that there's going to be more depth here. There's going to be more substance. The citrus that particularly stands out, as at least tonight, on the blotter is 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 a sort of grapefruity sharp orangey bergamot um feel i'm pretty sure that rodrigo told me that it contains something in the region of 30 odd percent of bergamot but i would need to check that with him but i'm pretty sure he said it was a very 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 high concentration of bergamot um rachel saying so far i like flores Rue's aquatics <clears throat> different from the usual calone bombs yes and of course he did um la trog for Arquiste, which is another really, really great uh, citrus. He, he He's really skilled at making scents luminous, at making the, the citrus notes feel um, realistic, with, without making you think that he's created something that's quite throwaway and disposable. Um, yeah, the, the, there's a nice touch of sweetness there. What the brand says about Aquafortis is the ultimate freshness, transportive, joyful, and explosive, delivered through top shelf quality citrus essences and just a naughty little smidge of iris and vetiver. It's got what they call Buddha's hand lemon essence from India, which is a Givaudan specialty product, a Petit Gras lemon tree essence, and a bergamot cur or bergamot heart which is one of these um Giverdon materials that rodrigo was telling me about in the heart it's called jasmine sandback absolute tangerine tree flower lavender absolute and then it goes down to the vetiver cur uh, and an iris absolute from tuscany it's it's well worth well worth checking out james says is it something like aqua de parma colonia essenza it stays long enough on my skin yet remains bright throughout Maybe, although that, of course, has got more of that traditional cologne feel. Um, I haven't smelt Essenza for a long time. I mean, you may have something there, but th those cologne ones, I, I, I like the Aqua de Palma colognes, but they do start going into that kind of powdery, soapy territory as well, don't they? And we should also smell... Um, I think we should smell Passion Victim, because um, it's, it, it's got a fun name. Let me let me put this one away so I don't start getting them confused. <clears throat> Eco Jock says, I love Jasmine Sandback. I used to work in a nursery and loved going down that section. Oh, I see. Oh, interesting. Right, let's find, let's find, let's find Passion Victim. Um because I'm pretty sure that Passion Victim, unless I've misremembered. No, perhaps I have misremembered. And what I'm trying to get is the one that's um, the the amber. No, I, I think maybe it was possession. Let's go. Let's go to possession. Let's go to possession. I will. Well, if if it wasn't that one, then we will soon know. Let's go possession. 
I will I will know as soon as I spray it if that was the one because it it opened immediately like a kind of a sort of love child of obsession and uh Shalimar. But perhaps this isn't it. So we'll find out in a sec. Okay. If that if it isn't possession, then it's passion victim. And you I basically told you why why I think that one is special. So let's see. No, it wasn't it wasn't this one, I don't think. Now I'm confusing myself. For possession, they've said the joyous encounter between petally floral notes and ultra chic woody nuances touched by jewel like fruity nuances. Oh, I remember which one possession was now. Yeah. A couture like sheep construction, welcoming, elegant, and civilized. Right. Possession is the one that is kind of like Rodrigo's take on uh, Narciso Rodriguez for her. If you think of Narciso Rodriguez, which is a, a, a really, really interesting and very, very successful modern sheep with that with that strong patchouli base, that almost like a kind of burnt feeling patchouli with that floral heart, this this is his take on it, um, which, which works. But I suppose what makes it different is that kind of fruity top. And as the notes say, it's got a, a pear tree blossom uh, accord, Alpine, uh, an alpine cyclamen accord and a pineapple base and you get that kind of slightly acidic feel from it as as you're smelling it passion victim i've already talked about that really does work like uh, like a sort of love child of um shalimar and obsession uh, and just just so that we we don't we don't have time to talk about all of them but uh, but radianza is is a is a sort of a radiant white floral. Um, Inconfessible is a very very interesting take a Rodrigo take on spices. So it's got cardamom and coriander and nut nutmeg and pepper and ginger. Uh, two types of pepper. It, it really really works well. And more is more is a really really kind of dark leather which rem uh, rose leather which reminded me quite a bit when I first smelt it. Um, of 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 idols um no of lubin's idol by olivia jacobetti so a strong start for this range um i will work my way through the samples a little bit more carefully and perhaps update things on the blog about them as i wear them and smell them more but i wanted um i wanted to bring them to your attention because i think of of the new brands that that i've become aware of uh, in recent months this is this is certainly up there amongst the most interesting ones so there you go you may have heard it here first I don't know I don't know if there are other videos out there about it but Will Germain check them out and if you can get a discovery set do and deep breath we will be back in a few moments with the fifth video for today and the final one for a few weeks but we're coming back with a classic. We're coming back with a scent that I suspect a lot of you know very well because I thought we would end with with an with an undisputed goodie. Okay, see you very, very soon. Take care. <clears throat>